All right, guys, Rich Schneider right here from TKR, joined by Ryan Keeler, Rutgers commit, or should I say signee now. Congrats, Ryan, on signing with Rutgers. Um, let's get right to it. Uh, what made you choose Rutgers in the end? Um, honestly, there was I couldn't find any uh, any downsides about Rutgers. They had everything I wanted mm -hmm. from uh, a good good academics, uh, a great coaching staff, a stable coaching staff, and a program that's on the come up. Mm -hmm. So now I know you kind of had a pretty good relationship with defensive line coach Jim Panagos. He's technically not coaching right now because of uh, I believe it was a knee surgery. Um, talk about the relationship you have with him, and um, do you guys still stay in contact even though he's technically not out there? Yeah, so uh, yeah, Coach Panagos, he's uh, I, I, uh, he's my guy. Um, I, I've known him for about maybe two years now. Uh, we've been talking every day, two years, multiple times a day. Um, mm. We have a great relationship. Um, he's a great coach, and I can't wait to play for him. Awesome. Now, um, obviously, Charlie, uh, Charlie Valone took over, or Scott Valone, geez, Charlie Noonan, it took over kind of, uh, and Westerman even, helping out at a defensive line unit. Have you talked to those guys too, or is it just mostly Panagos? Oh no, I talked to uh, Coach Noonan um, daily too, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I talked, I do talk to Coach Westerman um, a good amount too. I mean, I really talk to every every single one of the coaches a lot. Um, yeah. Coach Noonan is uh, Coach Noonan and Coach Westerman are doing a great job um, this year. I'm really uh, proud of mm -hmm. how they stepped in and just uh, took took off. <laughs> yeah. So I know I know this year's kind of been hard for a lot of recruits, especially you getting your senior season postponed technically but even though you're enrolling early so it doesn't matter I guess at this point so we'll go with canceled how hard has that been and how hard was it to not really make any visits yeah um it was pretty hard um not to play this not having a season because I mean this year we would we would have been really really good uh we had essentially the the whole team the, our whole entire offense back and uh we, we would have been pretty scary this year uh I think we, we, we were winning state easy um, and then uh, no, no visits. Um, it was really tough. I mean, cause the dead period has been almost nine months now. I mean, I was really yeah. looking forward to taking visits uh, in March and in April and those, and then the dead period hit. And then um, I really was looking forward to taking official visits. Everyone raves about them. Um, <laughs> I never got that experience, but I mean, in the end, it came down to me feeling like the Rutgers was home for me. So yeah. that's I still got that feeling without visiting. So then I knew that was the place for me. So I know we've talked about this before, but we're going back to your team a little bit. McCarthy was the quarterback. He's going to Michigan. How, what do you tell him since he's going to be at Michigan? You're going to be on the opposite side of the ball going after him a little bit. Uh, I'm I'm always telling him he should flip. I'm saying, why not? <laughs> look, look, at, look at Michigan this year. I mean, we're – we're doing better. We're, we're on the come up, but, uh, I, I, I always say, uh, you guys all know this that I say we're sacking them five times when we play him. So right, there you go. That's a nice goal there. You can't beat that. <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, sacks, do you talk to any of the players? I know like Mike divert off this week. I think you've talked to him a little bit in the past. He just had three sacks against, um, geez, I can't even remember. Um, Maryland, <laughs> Maryland, geez, I'm losing track with all the basketball, football, and everything going on. But yeah, you talked to anyone else, or Mike Tverdov, Julius Turner, anyone like that? Uh, me and Mike Tverdov, we uh, he's he's been talking to me actually even before I um, committed. He reached out to me because um, he knew that I was Rutgers is one of the finalists, obviously. And then actually Max Melton, um, we've had an interesting relationship. Uh, he actually uh, when he was committed to Purdue, I was like I was one of Purdue's top targets too, and he was. He would like FaceTime me all the time, be like, "Bro, come to get like come with me to Purdue and stuff." And like a few days later, he FaceTimes me and he's like, I'm, "And then he's at he was at Rutgers and he committed." So uh, we've we've known each other for a while, and uh, he's a great player, and uh, yeah, he's doing good things now. Yeah, so obviously, a freshman starting in the Big Ten and in Max, uh, what does he tell you about the school? And does that kind of give you that little bit of edge, thinking like, "Hey, I can come in here and do the same exact thing." For sure. I mean, he, he told me that uh, it was everything he wanted in the school. And I mean, that means, mm. means a lot to me because he's, he's really a player there. He's not just saying that he, he lives that life every day. So knowing that um, that's how strongly he feels, I feel great coming in. Mm -hmm. So you, now you're born and raised in Illinois, right? Yeah. Born and raised in Chicago. Yes. So, so how much of a difference is it going to be going to New Jersey? I know it's kind of a, I don't, I don't have you ever been here before? Oh, uh, not to New Jersey, but I've been on the East Coast like a lot. Okay, so obviously you know it's a different kind of culture a little bit. It's a, I don't know right. how to describe it other than different, but how much of a change is that going to be for you? 
Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I can adapt pretty quick. I'm, a, I'm a friendly guy. Uh, you know, I could, I could talk to anyone. And I mean, I've always kind of wanted to not get out of Chicago, but I've always wanted mm -hmm. to like expand my horizons, meet new people, and um, explore new things. And that's definitely what I'm going to get by going to the East Coast and going to Rutgers. Yeah. So, I mean, speaking of Illinois, you, you keep recruiting every single Illinois prospect there is to try to join you. What, what's your message to these guys? And uh, how hard of a sell is it to an Illinois kid to come all the way to the East Coast? Uh, I mean, I, I always tell them, um, just look, look what I did. Uh, I had a lot of options from a lot of local schools, a lot of schools around the board, and I came all the way out to New mm -hmm. Jersey. I tell them that uh, we're building something special, and I want them to be a part of it. And uh, now it's a lot easier because uh, Rashad yeah. is also committed. So I could say, well, look at us. We got two guys now. So uh, it's definitely uh, – it's definitely a good thing now. Now, you were kind of the ringleader a little bit of this class. Most of the times, it's usually the quarterback. Obviously, no quarterback in this class. But you were the kind of ringleader. You were kind of recruiting guys nonstop, whether they were from Illinois, New Jersey, New York, whatever, Pennsylvania, so on and so on. Like, um, I guess, how did you kind of fall into that role? And um, what, do you, what do the guys say to you all the time? What do you guys uh, talk about, I should say? That's just something uh, I always – I, I want to be a coach, so uh, recruiting is going to be a part of that. But, I mean, I, I really just want to be surrounded by great players. I want to do everything I can to help build this program up. And uh, recruiting is obviously a big part of that. So I want to build relationships with as many guys as possible to help to help the program and help the team. So now you're still going to send out a couple quote tweets and stuff like that when you're on the team? Always. Every day. At least, at least I, I'm, I'm on Twitter all day. <laughs> yeah. So what made you want to be a coach in the future? I know, obviously, football and all that, but. um, Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I've had a lot of great, great coaches um, in my mm -hmm. life, and I want to give back and uh, give what others gave to me, to the youth and the younger kids. And also, I mean, I get to being, be paid to do something I love. How could I pass up that opportunity? Yeah, exactly. So who's, uh, who's the best coach ever? You could go Pop Warner in high school. Who is it? <laughs> Now, uh, well, I like, mean, if you don't want to throw out names, I understand, but what, like, what, what kind, like, a head coach or just like any coach? Uh, any, any coach in general. It doesn't have to be a head coach, assistant coach, best, your favorite coach ever, or the guy that helped you the most, you should say. Um, I'll have to say, uh, Coach Racky. Um, he's, he's the best. Um, I, I loved my time at NAS and I love playing for him. He, uh, really instilled, mm -hmm. uh, family values in me, hardworking values. And NAS is, uh, it's no joke. It was a hard program. I was fighting every day as a little freshman and sophomore in varsity. And that really, I feel like that is really going to help me. And um, when I get to Rutgers and I'm playing in the big 10 mm -hmm. and um, Naz is a, uh, it's, it's a great place. And I'm glad I was there. Obviously being from the Midwest, you talk about big 10 football. It's, it's the mainstay there pretty much. Um, did you ever grow up thinking you'd be ended up being signing in a big 10 school playing in big 10? Oh, no, no. I mean, not at all. Honestly, like I always knew that I wanted to play college football. Like I didn't mm -hmm. really, I didn't really have any like, uh, dr like dreams of or like a dream school or stuff like that. I always wanted to play yeah. college football. I always thought it'd be like a, like a D3 school, or like a smaller school. I never thought it would be at this level, but uh, I'm just blessed. So now how hard was it? I think you had over 20 plus scholarships, right? If I got that right. Or somewhere somewhere around yeah, how yeah. hard of a how hard is it to make that decision and i know like a lot of people would cut it down to like some people cut it down to 15 at this point or 12 like how easy or how hard was it i guess to cut it down to five and then eventually that one um it honestly was really hard um because um i i it was there was a lot of schools that uh had the opportunity to be recruited by and there was a lot of great schools mm -hmm. and um it just came down to my, my, my recruiting didn't go long, but I took it all the way to my senior year summer. So that just automatically uh, eliminated options. And then once I started really narrowing into it, um, I, I could tell who, what schools are for me. And I never wanted to be the kid who would drop a top 30, top 20, top 15, top 12, top 10, top eight. I wasn't. Yeah. That was me. So the, the top five and then committing was good enough for me. So now you said before you're on Twitter a lot. So I'm assuming you use your phone quite a bit. Take me through the daily life. I kind of know what it is because I cover it and I hear it from kids all the time. But for the people that don't know, what's the daily life like of a recruit? Like whether it's are you getting like 50 DMs a day, like 20 DMs? You're getting text messages, phone calls. Like what's it like? Oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Take us I through mean, a day as a recruit. 
Okay. Um, honestly, it's not as, uh, it's not as busy um, anymore, obviously, because I'm committed. But let's just say four months ago in quarantine, uh, or right, like in uh, April, May, June, I would, yeah. I would wake up to like 30, 35 text messages from head, head coaches. Like they would send me stuff every day, like a mm -hmm. few missed phone calls and stuff. And I would probably, honestly, I would spend sometimes eight, eight to seven hours just on phone calls all day with different schools. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. so uh, it, it was it was pretty rough, but I mean, obviously, it's a blessing. Uh, not that many mm -hmm. kids get to experience that, so I was grateful I get to experience that. But now, um, now uh, recruiting is basically over, so I'll just uh, well, it is officially over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I um, I talk to just the Rutgers coaches, the mm -hmm. recruits we're trying to get, and the fellow signees we have. So now uh, you mentioned recruits are trying to get who are you after now. I know there's a couple of Illinois targets in there, probably a couple of Jersey guys still. Who are you after the most right now? Uh, well, I we were um, I I, we, I am trying to get uh, uh, Malone um, at, and then um, Gio or Gino and uh, Audric, but um, I don't think uh, Audric and um, Gino are gonna um, sign with us. So. Uh, that's out of the picture. Um, I'm really confident that we're going to get um, Aiden Lahri from uh, Illinois. He's a running back. Yeah. He's got a lot of talent. So um, I'm hoping we get him. And then there's uh, all the defensive linemen that we've offered. I talk to every day. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, I uh, feel that I can have build the best relationship with them and that'll give us the best chance to get them. Yeah. What's your message to those guys being that you're on the same unit and like, is it like, Hey, picture me, you on the same line, stuff like that. Or. Yeah. Hey, I, I don't really say that stuff. That's kind of corny. I never like, really, <laughs> like all those people be like me, you on same defense, bro. Killer. Like, no, like I never said that. I would always be like, I'm always just saying that you should want to be surrounded with great people who are going to push you every day. And that's what, you're going to get when you come to Rutgers and that's what I want when I come to Rutgers. So I'm trying to bring in, uh, bring in the best players possible. Mm -hmm. So now the one coach, I know we didn't talk about too much coach Ciano. What kind of relationship do you two have? Does he re like, is it closer than Panagos? I know Panagos was obviously your main recruiter. So you might have a little bit closer relationship with him. And I think he's been recruiting you since Minnesota too. Yeah. Um, no, me and coach Ciano, we have a great relationship. The first time I ever talked to him, I was very impressed. Coach Panagos told me that from the start. He said, when you talk to him, that'll be the best conversation you've had with the head coach. And uh, he, he was correct. It definitely was. Um, coach Shano's a, he's a great coach. Um, he's not going to, he's not your friend. He's here to be your head coach. And that's what I wanted. There's a lot of coaches in recruiting who would like try to just be friend. Like uh, obviously coach Shano is very, is very friendly, but uh, not to the extent the other coaches would be like, I knew that's not what I'm going to get when I would get to the school. Like, Sometimes coaches would play like iMessage games and stuff and like call me bro and say stuff like that. And like, I'm like, I know when I get to your school, that that's not what I'm going to get. So Coach Gianna mm -hmm. was straightforward and honest with me and he has everything that I wanted. So what's the craziest thing a coach said to you during your recruitment? <sighs> There's got to be like one story out there where you're like, what the heck did he just say to me? I, I don't, I don't remember a specific one but there was you don't just have like, to say who obviously just I can't, I can't think of honestly any right now but there was just like definitely some weird things i'm like i don't think you should say that <laughs> like there was just like i would just um i would talk to them like because during quarantine i would be up like pretty late and so sometimes like i would get calls from coaches or like at like two in the morning and like Jeez. we have a full-on conversation and i just i didn't really care because i'm up but i just thought yeah. that was like a little weird i'm like shouldn't you be like sleeping or something but well, yeah. i don't know Jeez, man, that's that's that one's a little strange. I'll give you that. Yeah. I've, I've heard I've heard worse, but that one's yeah, a I, I don't know. I I can't really think of any right now, to be honest with you. So uh, watching the team this season, right now they have three three Big Ten wins. It's the most they've had in I think uh, since their first season with the Big Ten. I forget what it was exactly. But uh, what what do you what stands out about them? I'm sure you're watching every single weekend. For sure, yeah. I mean, I, it just really um, stood out to me how. how um, how hard the team is playing and they, they mm -hmm. chop to the end, they fight to the end. It, no matter what the score is, they're always playing the hardest. Like against Ohio state, we, we literally played our hardest until the last play. And you don't find that a lot of times, usually if you're, if teams are losing by a big amount, they're just loudly gagging and messing around. But we, uh, we kept them in the game. We kept them playing their hardest too. And that was uh, great. And we, we, um, 
we should have been five and three this year. And that is crazy thinking of where we were last year, uh, yeah. took Michigan to triple overtime and then the close to Illinois game. But, uh, I'm very happy with what, uh, what we put on the field this year. Uh, it was a very competitive Rutgers team that we haven't seen in a while. All right. So give me your freshman year goal and your four year or four to five year goal at Rutgers for when you get there. <laughs> All right. Uh, my freshman year goal, I definitely want to be on the field. I want to be contributing a lot. Um, I never really, I never really set a specific goal. And uh, my four to five year goal is I definitely want to be um, an all American at uh, my position. Um, I want us to be as a team goal. I want us to be in a bowl game every single year. And then I obviously want to get drafted into the NFL. I can't beat that, obviously. <laughs> But uh, I mean, we, I mean, if you're gonna go to NFL, what's gonna happen to your coaching career? You're gonna put that on hold, or? Well, I mean, I play in NFL, and then I coach. It's the perfect oh, transition. Yeah, okay. Oh uh, no, I got you. I got you. Get the experience. <laughs> get get the little money, and then come back. Exactly. Uh, I hear you. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really all I got. If you have uh, anything else to say to Rutgers fans, uh, feel free to say anything. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. Uh, I talk to uh, a lot of Rutgers fans um, almost every single day, and I'm just glad that you guys are so welcoming and so excited for me to get there. And I can't wait to be part of the family.